Yeah. Hi guys, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. It is 4.30 in the afternoon and today we have Jay Palmer here and we are discussing the 300 most influential people, 2020. And we have interviewed more than 270 people around Asia and we have decided to include Pearly Marnie. Uh, Pearly Hi. Hi, good afternoon, good evening, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, Kiran? Yes. Hi, Jay. Hi, <laughs> Hi, hi. Um, so first of all, I just want to say you look lovely. Your hair is beautiful. And, uh, thank, you. and uh, thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Um, first of all, my question to you, Pearlie. For years, you know, you've obviously got a great social media, um, you know, and, you know, you've done a lot of work in the arts entertainment business, film, television, radio, fashion, etc., social media. But for a period of time in India, everything is completely quarantined. They're thinking about going back to lockdown again. London's gone mad. You know, we, we, we can't leave our houses after seven o'clock. I mean, it's completely dead. How are you dealing with quarantine and lockdown, first of all? Uh, initially, it was really tough. I was going through a tough phase. But then I realized that as an ent entertainer, my job is to entertain people. Hmm. If, if you're a doctor, your job is to cure people. Wow. If you are an engineer, you're supposed to build things. Wow. So as an entertainer, I felt like this was my time to entertain people and make sure they're all happy as much as I could. So um, I would say I was the most active during uh, the lockdown period. Um, I, my YouTube channel became very active. I started a web series called uh, Avasta, <laughs> which is about a couple that gets stuck during um, lockdown and uh, we were shooting all that in our flat with limited crew and everything and then uh, um, I came out with a funny uh, plastic elastic uh, cartoon uh, series for children um, which was quite entertaining for them and again it went viral so I had to uh, keep doing it and then um, I kept myself very active and I made sure I engaged my audience in such a way that I was only spreading uh, positivity and uh, hope and uh, made sure that they were all happy. Brilliant. And obviously going back into your early life, I mean, you know, we was, um, so I was looking at recently, you know, you're known for a video jockey, you're known for a television presenter and, you know, obviously, you know, you do a lot of things in Kerala. Is that correct? Yes. Now, obviously you're known for hosting the three seasons of Malali and the dance reality TV show D4 Dance, um, you know, and you're also a runner up for the first season of Big Boss reality TV show. On Asian net. Yes. Now, my question to you is obviously, you're brought up in early life. You know, you've done television, you did Taste of Kerala, D4 yes. Dance mm -hmm. Dance, you did Aifa, um, Aifa, Ut, Savam. Saima. Savam. Yeah, that, those are all uh, award yeah. functions here. Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. And yes. obviously, um, the eighth India South International Movie Awards, you know, the Funny Nights with Pearly. I mean, you've done a mighty stuff. You work along with Z. Now, my question to you is, how did you start your career? I think people need to know how you started your great career as a television presenter. Uh, for, I have no idea. <laughs> Brilliant. It just happened. Brilliant. Uh, my dad is a motivational speaker and he, he's been a motivational speaker for the past 25 years. Wow. Uh, he's a trainer for WHO. He gives his sessions all over the world. Wow. Uh, he's a trainer for the PM office uh, for the Special Protection Group of India. And uh, he does a lot of things and I grew up watching him and I've always wanted to be one. Um, and I understood that when he gives a session, um, usually it's in a hall that consists of more, probably like 300 or 400 people. But I thought, why not give it in social, I mean, in a media like uh, where you can reach out to lakhs of people. Uh, when I was 18, I wanted to join um, media and I wanted to understand how media works. So I'm a media student basically. And as I was doing media, uh, there was photography, which was part of our course. And uh, I was the muse for most of my classmates during their project because of my hair. Wow. And uh, that's amazing. how I started. The hair's <laughs> I wish I had my hair. hair was, <laughs> my hair was really crazy back then. Like now I've just tied it up, but uh, it was, everyone loved to click pictures of my hair. So. I had a lot of pictures of mine on Facebook and Facebook has just started back then and it was just picking up in India back then. And uh, that's how I started getting offers from modeling agencies asking if I was interested. And I was actually not interested in modeling then. 
fine. But uh, because I was a media student and I was like, why not try it? And uh, soon I got a call from Amrita TV. That's how I got into Taste of Kerala, the show. It's actually a, a travelogue where I, I ride bikes, by the way. So I was a biker and uh, they wanted me to ride bikes and explore Kerala, go to uh, various places within Kerala and try the food there. Jesus. So that I, I completed around 250 uh, episodes of that show wow. in Amrita TV. And later I switched to another show called Yes Jukebox, another uh, 250 episodes of that on that channel. Um, it so was talk, actually a show where you're making, I, you're, making us, you're making me and Jay feel this small. I think we should turn off the camera now and just say, look, let you get on with it. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> the thing is, I, I, I've always wanted to be a motivational speaker right. and I always keep asking daddy, daddy, when should I start, uh, you know, classes? Cause, uh, that's what I wanted to do. And the, my nature is basically very funny. Like I, I do really crazy things on chan on TV uh, because I really relate to old people. I relate to children a lot. I did a show called Katrumba, which, which is again a kids show, uh, which was on flowers. And uh, I was the host for that show as well. A show uh, called uh, uh, that's like a celebrity talk show I've hosted and another I've done a lot of different kinds of shows uh, but uh, um, in all of them I've always wanted to make people happy and forget anything that was bothering them that's my main intent well, I so, like I like <laughs> well, I like to make people sad. I mean, we're obviously you know, opposite. I'm kidding, kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. Uh, Jay, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so uh, Jay, question after you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a question. Of course, you were mentioning about. Of course, your father is a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. and probably he's one of the people that inspired you, kept you going. Yes. Uh, but excluding him, who would you say has also really inspired you mm -hmm. to get? To uh, I would say Oprah. Oprah Winfrey. From a very young age, I've been watching her shows and I love what she does. And even today, uh, I, I just follow her. Um, I just watch her and, I, and my dream is to meet her. <laughs> so I keep telling my fans, uh, like, uh, can you just go spam her <laughs> and tell her that there's someone called Pearly in Kerala and tell her that she I'll really wants that. to meet you. <laughs> Please, can you help me meet her? Because I love her so I've much. Got, and she... I've got someone called Pearly who wants to speak to you. Kiran, you better be serious because I'm taking <laughs> And uh, I, I, I dream about her. Uh, Oprah is someone, I mean, my dad knows that. So whenever um, I'm going through a rough patch, he tells me that imagine Oprah is right next to you. And if she was here, she would tell you that, you know, you're strong and just keep going forward. And I have a lot of beautiful people around me, my imagination that uh, keeps pushing me forward. And um, that's beautiful. Like, uh, yeah, Oprah. I love Oprah. And my other question to you is obviously a television presenter. We, we, you know, it's good to always have a laugh and a joke. But at the same time, you know, when we're talking really serious about kind of people's career, my question to you is, um, what's the next project for you? Because obviously, you know, India is second degree lockdown. Yeah, you can, you can go out now. It's not essential where you, ha you can stay in. But people don't, you know, we interviewed someone today and she said there's no point going anywhere because you can't even buy street food. You can't buy any yeah. nari and pani. You can't get any water. Milk. I love pani puri. I'm a pani puri fan. And I made pani puri at home because I love street food. I might look like this, but I love street food and I can't have expensive food. Like, like I might have pizzas once in a while but I love street food and street foods are the best especially when I go to Bombay for shoot uh, and Chennai everywhere <laughs> yeah well, what so might, you were saying sorry uh, your your project yeah. your project what kind of projects do you have coming up that people would love to know about and I think your fans would love to know um, I did a Hindi project it's a Bollywood movie wow. and I was shooting for the uh, movie for the past one and a half years Wow. Uh, so as soon as I finished Big Boss, I was inside Big Boss house for 100 days wow. and uh, I had no idea what was happening and I had completely been disconnected from the world and my family. I didn't know what was happening outside because you're not supposed to call anyone or talk to anyone. Yeah. So that's when my dad told me, you've been getting calls from uh, Andrag Basu production. Andrag Basu is the director who directed Barfi. Uh, Jaga Jasu's Gangster, Life in a Metro, Kites, and he's an amazing director. So I said, why would he call me? Why, why does he want to meet me? Are you sure it's Anurag Basu? And he said, yes. And we stayed back for another day. 
and we met him and I signed this project with him. Uh, so uh, it's called Ludo. It's releasing on Netflix in November. So I'm sure all of you can watch it and enjoy the movie and tell me how it was once it gets out. Well, me and Jay will be the first people in the first funk queue and the line. We'll definitely be there. (laughs) And also, Jay, question after you, Jay. Uh, Let's let's take you back to when you were, let's say, 20 years of age, right? Right now, you're in your 30s, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's, Let's say you're 20 years old today. What would you do different um, to what you did before? I, I wouldn't do anything different because I had a lot of failures in my life. And uh, it was tough during that time to experience failures and pain and breakups and, you know, a uh, lot of things. I went through so many things. And I feel like I'm tough right now because of all those things. So I wouldn't change anything. <laughs> yeah. also, my, my other question to you is as well is, the industry that you're in is very hard. Let's just get that one thing straight. You know, there is 1.2 billion people out there in India, or 1.3, I believe. Now, you know, it's one of the biggest populations in the world. Everybody is trying to, uh, what do you call it? Everyone is trying to make their own success. Everyone is trying to make their own kind of recognition because it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, lawyer, dentist, actor, director, everybody wants to be recognized for their own thing. Now, obviously, yes. you've got, obviously you've managed to get films, television, host major awards. What advice would you give to young Indian people out there in India right now that are watching you that don't necessarily have the father behind them or necessarily that has the motivation? Because everyone's mentality is different. Some people yes. are like you. Some people are just push, 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 push. Me, push, yeah. push, push. Jay. <laughs> like also, yes. you know, Jay's also a very good observer. He observes people as well. I can see that he's been really quiet and I think he's just been observing us right now all through this. I'm his, I'm his older brother. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. He just comes up with a great question once in a while. Hey, listen, okay. I had a good question. Anyway, go on, anyway. <laughs> um, but yes. um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what advice would you give to young people out there in India that are suffering right now that don't necessarily have the money, the finance, the parents, people that live in the villages that want to make one day become a dream? that follow you on Instagram and Facebook, what would you like to tell? What advice would you give and core advice you give to young budding actors out there? The first thing I would like to say is I'm giving them all a virtual hug because I feel like hugging them. Sometimes uh, all, all we need right now is someone to hug you or just comfort you because human touch is so essential in our lives because no matter how much you grow, Jay and Kiran, would you like to stay alone in a house for the rest of your life? if you're rich and if you're successful in your career, at the end of the day, all you need is someone to uh, be there for you, someone who can love you. And I would say that that someone should be within you first. If you can be your best friend and if you can be your own dad, your mom, if you can be that strong person uh, for yourself for the rest of your life, then you're sorted. Because most people, they have to deal with their own mind voice, which is not necessarily that great and positive. Imagine I'm going through a tough time. And if, I'm, if my mind is weaker than me, um, I, I may not find the light at the end of the tunnel. But if I'm strong and if I can just keep pushing myself, um, just I, like how I work out, <laughs> I think I should work out my mind too. We should spend time for that. You need to c- keep affirming yourself with positive words. Um, the predominant words that pop up in your head every time, that you have, every time you have a challenge. Uh, if it's negative, you need to replace those words with positive words. And it's, it, it's a, it is a process. And I think during this lockdown period and when you're actually sitting at home, it's a beautiful exercise that you can do. We have so many motivation speakers all over the world who are actually extremely, act, extremely active during this time. Um, in fact, Jay Shetty had sent me one of his books uh, uh, all the way to India. And that's a great gesture. And uh, uh, again, Oprah, I love uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. All of these people, they talk about how powerful your mind is. Because mind is what has to be, if you have to change anything in this world first, you need to change that in your mind first. Yeah, if you can see it in your mind, you can. So uh, when people say all these things, it's very, it sounds very simple, but it's not that easy. You need to have that willpower. You need to really keep pushing yourself. And you need to, you need to believe in yourself. Um, 
another thing that i would say is no matter how successful you might look career wise uh, if you're happy uh, deep within even when your career is not going that great even when everything looks bad around you if you're really able to stay happy within yourself i would call that person happy because when i travel when i travel i travel a lot uh, i i love trekking i love going to himalayas so when i travel to places like that i see people who don't have anything they might be living in a one bedroom four to five people a husband and wife literally struggling to you know put uh, food on their plates every day but they look so happy together and there's so much happiness on their face and they look extremely content wow. um simply because they are happy i i don't i don't know how to explain that at the same time i've seen people who are extremely rich they have everything they have luxury cars and houses and they go everywhere they can travel but at the end of the day they just want more and they're not happy they're looking for more and more happiness because they're not happy within the way you connect with yourself if you're connected to yourself no matter where you are you're going to be happy even if you i would say we we can't predict how the world is going to go it might get worse it might get better but at the end of the day you should not be just you know existing through life you should just fight through life and just be a winner and even if you are about to die just understand that you know you've done your best and then you die you just just do everything you can and just be happy so that people will say at the end of the day he was a very happy guy that's what i want to be known as a happy person brilliant and so that's success fantastic well and last question to uh, uh, jay a good question please jay yeah no, 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 <laughs> just to respond to what you were saying about how powerful your your mind is that's something i personally study as well and i think that is massive to to yes. a lot of things uh, but my last question what keeps you going after all this fame and you know the opportunities you've got right now maybe the the money is very lucrative what keeps you going at this high level that you're at right now I don't uh, the first thing is I never went behind fame I never went behind money these are the two things I don't go behind I go behind things that I love uh, that I'm passionate about I'm ready to take risks and I always think of my people like imaginary I I have a lot of fans who connect with me on Instagram I try to reply back to most of them and uh, probably that's why they love me so much um usually an anchor does not have 2 million subscribers and followers on instagram and things like that but when i speak i speak from my heart and i see the whole world like my family it doesn't take me much time to connect with anybody because i i believe that these are all my family like that's how i visualize my the people around the world they're just unknown family members that i'm yet to meet so i just love my people and every time i believe in myself work comes to me if i tell you how my career has been i've never gone and asked anyone for work i have just kept believing that i'm content and everything is going to come to me if and i just imagine myself as a magnet this is why i love oprah because i don't love her because of anything else but she is the reason why i am myself like i am like this because of her and i've kept believing in myself i'm not saying i've had a cake walk till here but um, every time i was low i didn't give up in here i didn't give up in here it would have looked bad for other people they would have felt sorry for me or they would have said oh pearly doesn't have anything right now she has no work but in deep inside i just felt like a caterpillar uh, in a cocoon stage waiting to come out as a butterfly that's how i imagine myself like a hibernation everyone deserves to hibernate and connect with yourself and for me the lockdown period i look at it in a very beautiful way like a time for us to sit and resonate with our own thoughts and just fix ourselves and you know get ready for the next wave that's going to come up i mean the beautiful wave early mainy i want to say thank you so much for your time today uh, yes and it was brilliant talking to someone like you and you know someone that's so kind of highly intelligent and got a westernized kind of mentality you know obviously you look up to you know you haven't talked about bollywood stars you've talked a lot about hollywood people so it shows that you've got you know two different sides of you which is great you know that you can you can transparent to other kind of countries and mentalities so you know congratulations to you and also congratulations you. to you on being on the 300 most influential people 
Thank you, Kieran. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're welcome. Just so, give me just give me one set before you go. One second.